If you keep defying me, I'll divorce you. Ever since he got his hands on a lot of money, my husband has changed. Money is truly a terrifying monster. You over there, thinking that having more money will bring you happiness. The pitfall is surprisingly close at hand. My name is Mary. I'm a 48-year-old working housewife. I've been married for about 20 years. Living honestly and prudently has always been my motto. I've been old lady through the thick of the recession, you know. During the job crisis, I barely managed to get into a company. Even after getting married and having children, I continued to work tirelessly until now. My husband is also from the same recession generation. There were times when both of us were unemployed, but somehow, we supported each other and survived. Our two sons are still in high school and middle school. As long as we don't splurge, we can get by, but financial worries are never ending. Who knows how much it will cost to put both kids through college. Today again, I'm staring at the household budget and the calculator. Mary, why the serious face? My husband casually asks while finishing his third beer. This month, we've had a lot of expenses for various events. We need to cut back somewhere, whatever. He laughs mockingly, but the beer he's drinking was on sale for $1.85 a can. With the recent inflation, the prices of many things have gone up. He doesn't understand that it adds up to a significant amount. Beer isn't free, you know, I muttered resentfully. Then he said, you're really stingy. He laughs down at me again. Stop calling me stingy. We need to save for the kids' tuition and for our own retirement too. But to my husband, my worries seem needless. What are you talking about? We'll have our pension and retirement benefits when we retire, right? That's what he says, but I can't help but worry. We're both managing as company employees, but who knows when the company might go bankrupt or one of us might lose our job. I'm working hard to make sure we can survive even if that happens. Mary, you're overthinking. Live more optimistically like me. These days, I sometimes even envy my husband's carefree attitude. One of my small joys is buying a lottery ticket once a month. I don't gamble for fun, but buying a dream is enjoyable. Well, I never win, but the excitement until the results are announced is an indescribable bliss for me. Lottery tickets never win. It's a waste of money. My husband snorts at my little hobby. Mary, you always talk about saving money, but you indulge in things like this. A lottery ticket that costs just $3 is considered a luxury? It's cheaper than your daily beer, you know. But I'm not in the mood to argue about it. My husband might mock me, but that steak we had the other day was bought with the $30 I won from the lottery. You enjoyed it, didn't you? My husband really doesn't know anything. I have plenty of complaints about my husband, but for now, we're living a stable life. And that's enough to make me happy. After all, we have enough to eat, wear, and live, and our kids, though cheeky, are growing up well. Even with worries, I don't have any major complaints. Or so I thought. But, the gears went out of sync because of a certain event. That day, when I came home from work, my husband was home early, which was rare. Oh, you're home early. Yeah, well, he seemed a bit restless. Was it just my imagination? It was 6 p.m. Our two sons were still at their after-school activities. I was about to start preparing dinner before the kids came home when... Mary, I have something important to tell you. With a serious look, my husband started speaking. What? What's going on? Are you okay? Just sit down for a minute. He told me to sit, and I did. Then, he pulled something out of his suit pocket. I won. Won what? Well. What is he being so secretive about? One million dollars. What? The lottery. I won a million dollars. No way. Really? I couldn't believe it. In my decades of buying lottery tickets, the highest I ever won was thirty dollars. And now my husband, who bought a ticket on a whim, won a million dollars? I had to see it to believe it, so I checked his ticket number online. Sure enough, the numbers matched. No way. I can't believe it. I was so shocked that I nearly fell over. I never thought we'd actually win. Honey, this is amazing. Yeah. Now we don't have to worry about money anymore. God really does exist. He gave us a reward for all our hard work. We both acted like kids, giddy with excitement. 
That night, we took the family to a fancy steak restaurant and told our sons the news. Dad, that's awesome. Does this mean we're rich now? Yay, the kids' faces lit up. I couldn't help but get excited too with a million dollars in our hands. There really is a God. Thankful for my husband's random purchase, we enjoyed our steak to the fullest as a family that night. Life after that was like heaven. Why don't we take this opportunity and buy a car? Let's go out for some expensive dinner today. How about we go on an overseas trip this year? The joy of living without worrying about money was unparalleled. Every day, we thought of and indulged in all sorts of luxuries. We felt like real celebrities, but then, Happiness can be bought with money, right? My husband said this out of the blue. I half agreed, but also half doubted him. My husband and I had gone through times without money together. I felt he was getting a bit overconfident. Recently, he even paid for all his junior colleagues' drinks and took a taxi home when he could have walked. And he handed over $100, saying, Keep the change. As for me, I thought we should indulge a little and then save the rest for our retirement and the kids. I thought that. But, my husband was steadily losing his mind. One day, I think we should rebuild the house. Rebuild? Not just remodel? According to my husband, it would cost about $500,000. Why spend so much money? We'll bring my parents here, and we'll all live together. You'll have it easier. My parents will be with their grandkids, and I can be a good son. It's a win-win-win. W.H. what? My in-laws are still healthy at 75. My Phil recently won a croquet tournament, and my mill is still an active flower arrangement teacher. Are your parents unwell? Huh? Do we need a reason like that to live together? If they needed care, I could understand the idea of living together. I get along well with my in-laws and think we could manage. If they needed a barrier-free home, a remodel would suffice. But my concern wasn't about that. How are we going to afford $500,000? We have the lottery winnings. Wait, let's calm down and discuss this. I tried to reason with him. There's no way I can just hand over $500,000 like it's nothing. We need to discuss with his parents and see if rebuilding is really necessary. My husband calmed down for a bit after I said that. But, since then, his behavior got worse. He became demanding saying, Hey, get the dinner ready, in a haughty tone. And he started making demeaning comments like, You just plan to leech off my money, don't you? You're such a greedy woman. Are you still holding a grudge about not rebuilding the house? Enough already. Of course I am. Why do I need your permission to be a good son? I'm just being reasonable. Your parents agreed with me too. I had subtly mentioned the idea of living together to my in-laws. They said they didn't want to leave their familiar place at this age and didn't want to burden us with their care. But my husband wasn't convinced and kept grumbling. Since then, we started fighting constantly. He would pick on me over trivial matters and eventually he said, You just hate everything about me, right? You're only after my money. The atmosphere at home grew more and more hostile. One day, my husband came home drunk, which was unusual. Apparently, he had been out drinking with his boss. Thanks for working late. Here, have some water. But he swatted the glass out of my hand. Hey, what the hell are you doing? You lived lavishly on my lottery winnings. But as soon as I want to spend it on my parents, you oppose it. When I consulted my boss, he called you a devil wife. Well, he's right. You dismiss my desire to be a good son. A devil wife? How rude. Are you still saying that? Let me remind you, if we spend $500,000 on rebuilding the house, how much will be left? You've already spent a lot on luxuries. We still need money for the kids and our retirement. As I said this, my husband's face grew even angrier. You always talk about living frugally and never let me enjoy anything. You hate me, don't you? If you keep defying me, it's divorce. Divorce? Is that a threat? I thought he was just drunk and spouting nonsense. I've got money. You're not the only woman in the world. Plenty of women would come running if I flashed some cash. I realized for the first time how vile my husband could be. Then he revealed he had been fooling around with a young woman from a bar downtown. Got it. If you don't want to be left behind, start listening to me. We'll rebuild the house, bring my parents here, and I'll continue to have affairs. Ha <laughs> ha. Fine, I'll divorce you. I declared without hesitation. Humph, you won't regret it? Are you sure you're okay with this? 
I stared at him coldly. How could he change so much just because of some money? I won't share the money with you, are you sure? Fine. Don't regret it, okay? You too. We divorced, and I got custody of our two sons. My husband tried to tempt them saying, if you live with me, you'll live in luxury. Are you sure? But they were resolute. Fine, we like living comfortably, but we like mom's cooking more. I never expected my usually rebellious sons to say such a thing. We're fed up with dad's attitude. We'd rather be poor than live in a house with him. I'll get a part-time job to help with the household expenses. Don't be silly. You don't need to worry about that. Just focus on your studies. Hearing their words made me so happy that I couldn't help but shed a tear, though I kept it a secret. It was around the time when a year had passed since the divorce. We had moved to a new place and were getting used to living as just the three of us. One bright afternoon on a weekend, my cell phone rang loudly. Mary, please help me. It was my husband. Well, my ex-husband now. What do you need? Please, I need to borrow some money. What? I was so shocked by his unexpected request that I almost dropped my phone. What do you mean by money? Why do you need money? I need a large sum by the end of this month, please. Here's what he told me. Right after the divorce, he had quit his job. Then, persuaded by a salesperson from a consulting firm, he became the owner of a cafe. He had always dreamed of being the employer rather than the employee. The deal was that the consulting firm would provide the location and funding for the cafe, and he would become the owner. And a portion of the cafe's profits would go to him. Don't worry about the details, I'll handle everything. You just need to provide the initial investment. You can make your dream come true. This is your chance. I've been looking for someone like you. You need to put your money to work, not just let it sit idle. Falling for these words, he did as the consultant suggested. However, after the first few months of making a profit, sales began to decline. Then the consultant pitched another business idea to him. This time it's not a cafe, but becoming a property owner, you buy an apartment and use the rental income to pay off the loan. Once the loan is paid off, you'll have a steady income. You've seen those ads, right? It seems safe. But, I can't find any tenants. The loan repayments are killing me. And, I spent the entire million dollars. How did a million dollars disappear so quickly, in just one year? What else did you spend it on? After we divorced, I ended up rebuilding the house. She insisted on it. She, apparently, he had been approached by a young woman and rebuilt the house for her and bought a vacation home as well. The woman, a 20-something working in the nightlife industry, had met him right after our divorce. He had planned to use the cafe profits and rental income to cover the costs of the renovation and the vacation home loans. But he's turning 50 this year. How did he manage to get loans so easily? The consulting firm arranged the loan company. The interest rate was higher than usual, but I thought it would be okay because I had the money. But with no cafe profits and no tenants for the apartments, he ended up using his savings to make the loan payments. And so, he managed to blow through a million dollars. That consultant sure knew what they were doing, finding a sucker like my ex and taking him for everything he had. I sighed and told him, why don't you sell the vacation home or the house? At least you'd get some cash that way. If I do that, she'll leave me. I can't handle that. Besides, even if I sell them, the debt will still remain. How much do you have in savings? Can't you use a little to help me with the loan payments? Why should I? We're not even together anymore. There are plenty of other women besides me, right? Ask one of them to help you. Don't be so cold. We were married once. And you're the one who ruined it spectacularly. Please. I was so appalled by his pathetic state that I couldn't find the words to respond. At the same time, I felt relieved that I had managed to cut my losses before getting dragged into this mess. What a pitiful man. To blow through a million dollars in just a year and end up in even more debt. A year ago, he never would have imagined this outcome. I always thought he had a poor sense of money, but this was beyond anything I expected. Anyway, we're not related anymore. I'll consider giving you a break on the child support though. Child support. Oh, I know. Give me back all the child support I've paid so far, and I'll take care of the kids. Seriously? No, thank you. In the end, he had to sell the house and the vacation home. Even then, the loans remained. 
the woman left him, and he lost contact with the consultant. Now he's living in a $300 a month apartment, struggling to pay off the rest of the loans. But why did he quit his job? The world isn't kind enough to offer new jobs to a 50-year-old man without qualifications. He managed to get a job as a contract employee, but the salary is lower than that of a new hire, and he can barely support himself. Sometimes, he contacts our sons, saying, I'm going to rise from here. I'm still buying lottery tickets, dreaming of another chance. It's good to have dreams, but every time I hear about them, I can't help but feel a mix of emotions. He should be saving every penny instead of buying $3 lottery tickets. As for me, I'm balancing work and raising my kids steadily. This year, thanks to my company's good performance, my summer bonus was 1.5 times higher than last year. I bought my sons what they wanted, and as a reward for myself, I got the laptop I'd been eyeing for a while. I'm really into online shopping now. Oh, I want that and this, I should buy both with my bonus. Mom, aren't you buying a bit too much? My older son scolded me, making me a little downhearted. I could almost understand my ex-husband's feelings, just a little. Was dein Tag auch bringt.